Here we go guys, this is my testing setup. I changed some things, you can see the grommets in there. Makes it so the wires don't catch on fire. You can see now everything, it's routed right out the bottom. It's like it should be. And the only other thing I can look for is something springy, this plastic that I can put in there and just tape in there so it stays, but it's done well so far. Right over here is my old school Tesla coil and it is on the Slayer exciter circuit. I'm having a lot of trouble with this. We're looking for feedback to come in. And when you do that, you're looking for the oscillation to slow down. And when that does, you're looking for the number one coil to start to hum. The problem is, Slayer exciter, it shuts down the oscillation completely at the mop set, and you don't necessarily get the hum. So it's a complete shot in the dark. So I could I put it down the center, didn't work. I'm gonna to try to directly connect it this time. Again, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I th I honestly think I need a different Tesla coil to make this thing work because that hum is the most important part, and I have the rest of it. This over here is the regular rest of the setup. Take a look. I separate my high voltage over here. All the wires come this way. I'm running a double flyback. Y run two. I'm looking for polarization of the disc. So when I turn it on, I'm going to turn it on and off a couple times. I know Alexi says just to bring it up a little bit at a time, but I want to polarize the disc. Then I want to bring it back down and bring the energy up. So we'll do that first thing. And my disc is set up just so you know where the wires go onto the plates. They're 50 50. So it's going to be touching 50% of the time, 50% of the time it's not going to be touching. So it's always going to pull more polarization in there in order to keep that toroidal working. So, here we go. I just have a 12 volt power source right here. I hooked up to a motor driver. That all goes to that high voltage circuit. Sorry, let me get around here. It goes to that high voltage. So that's all this side. This side right here, I have an adjustable power source. It goes off to my uh, ultrasound right here. And that goes over to the gravity flyer. I flip my ultrasound on my gravity flyer. It was facing downward. I now have it facing upward. What's the difference? Well, it was just popping the piezo and clicking when I had it going down. Now it's pushing the entire frame up when it hits a very high point. It'll force the whole thing up. And that's what's changing the plate. You remember before I tapped the plate? Well, now I don't have to. As long as that piezo works fine, it should go ahead and tap the whole thing and get it to go in between either, you know, Jared was telling me it wasn't the octave, it's the um, harmonics in it, whether it hits a seventh or not. Guys, I don't care what you call it. I'm going to keep calling it the octave. I'm going to keep getting that thing to tap and hit that, that extra energy point. So, there we go. There's my motor driver. That right there is for my Tesla coil. It goes over to the driver. And the driver's on my little fan set up there. It's just some offset. And there you go to my Tesla coil. So everything's kind of... Let me get a fucking walk backward here. We're at a good distance. Uh, right now I'm about 8 to 9 feet uh, from where I'm sitting at, working on it, to the actual uh, gravity flyer. My Tesla coil is about 6 feet away from that, from the gravity flyer. So we're kind of right where Alexi was on his testing video. So I'm going to bring this thing up to speed, and we'll see it. And there's a couple different resonance points in there. Alexi just brought it all the way up, so I'm going to try that. Though I like the way I do it better, I'm, I'm going to try it his way this time. Alright, let's see. Let just put this in a place where I can get to everything. Okay. Just fire on the motors. Let me bring this in here so you can see the motors. 
the bottom one, you see how slow it is? It's going to take a while to get up to speed. When you're dealing with these fan motors, see the top one goes like crazy. Now the bottom one's starting to come in. See that right there? It just went to a resonance point. Now it's smooth now. That's how you tell the difference. Alright, we're about up to speed. We can go ahead and put our high voltage in. Yeah, I, I do not like making the throttle to get the resonance point. I prefer doing it with the actual motor speed. Alright. There we go. Now, what I'm doing is I'm bringing it up to the point where I like it the best on my high voltage. Not necessarily the point I'm going to leave it at, but where I like it the best. Bring it up. Bring it down. Bring it up. Bring it down. Bring it right back up. What I don't like about not being in resonance when you first start is you're not seeing the, the interaction change that you need to. So, alright, now. Got about a quarter turn in it right now. We're going to have to wait and let it build up. Right now the Tesla coil's off, piezo's off. So we're just dealing with the high voltage and the motor speed. And the motor speed cranked all the way up. To be honest with you, how we found a resonance point in this thing without the motor speed being absolutely correct is beyond me. I mean, I, I understand the concept. It, it proves the field is there on the upper and lower part, and that the Tesla coil is pushing them, pushing both of them. So it says, hey, I'm here. So I guess that's what he was looking for in the beginning. It has to be because he knows full well he can change the motor speed and get the resonance point right. So I did find the resonance point at 11.9 volts. And my max is 12.4 volts. That means that the toroidal itself has to slow down the motors by 0.5 volts in order to find the resonance point. Okay, here we go. There's another quarter turn right there. This last one takes a little bit, so you just have to look at it. To be honest with you, when we saw his video, the amount of time that he spent on it wasn't as much getting it up to speed as it was tinkering with the ultrasound and the uh, Tesla coil at the same time. So that was encouraging to see. Because uh, what I've been hearing was, you know, an hour or two, and that's pretty much what everybody's been hearing. So, you got about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. He's ready to go if he can hit that point real quick. So we're going to keep going with the way he does it. One cheating method, to be very honest with you, put a probe next to both and find out what your piezo is going at and what your Tesla coil is going at. Line up the peaks and you might hit it. But I've been having trouble with that Tesla coil because the feedback has to go into the number one coil and the number one coil on this will shut that whole thing down on the Slayer Cider circuit. So, we're working on it right now.
All right, here we go. We're going for the last turn. Now, all the way up to the point where it shouldn't spark over. Give that some time to kick in. One thing you notice right now is you're not hearing the piezo at all. It's, well one, it's not in the right resonance state to make the piezo pop as much as it should be. Number two, it's not on. So, either one, remember, receiver, transmitter, it would receive it, but it's not even in a resonance state to receive it right now. You have to be in resonance for it to receive it. And right now we're nothing, we're just running motors, which, it's just crazy. Alright, I'm going to set my power source for my ultrasound. I'm not going to turn it on yet. I'm just going to set the power source. I've got 5 volts and 1.3 amps is what I'm going to put into it. Again, it's turned off right now, but I turned on the, uh, the actual, oh god, adjustable power supply so I can set it and be ready to go. God knows you got to do something in this time because this right here sucks waiting. Oh man. So I, just so you guys know why we're waiting, I'll tell you. I had a piece of copper in there that went to my plate. And as it bent over and it hit a little more than a 90 degree angle it would spark back on itself and what it would do was kill the energy in the craft so I just switched the wire and I made it a bare wire and now it gets in there and it sounds pretty good right now one of the things I don't like about the high speed of this thing is it flattens it out too much where you're not getting as much bump on this thing, so it it may not pick up the toroidals all that well at all. So, and then if you put it too heavy on these because they're fan motors, the bottom disc won't actually be able to start. So, it's kind of like a play and see where you get the power from. All right. We should have that going now. It's kind of the moment of truth. We'll see what it does when we turn on the Tesla coil. And we also turn on our ultrasound. Now I have a preset in my ultrasound. And it goes like this. You start, you get one revolution, two revolution, and right right at about three-eighths a little over a quarter and that's where I'm going to start at okay we should hear a clicking in this thing when we turn it on because we're transmitting so let's go ahead and we're going to turn them both on low Just so you guys know, the piezo isn't completely off right now. It's making it sounds going like real quick. You'll hear it in there, but you haven't hit any amplification point. So it is in there. It's tapping between the piezo disc and the top of the piece of plastic right there. And it's going rapid. It hasn't hit a resonance point. What do I mean by that? When you hit the hit resonance point, it's going to amplify. So you're going to find a point in this where it's going to start to amplify and then you're really going to start to hear that piezo pop. And it makes a very distinctive click sound when you hit those resonance points. Now, you kind of have to match it up. And 
when you're doing this and you don't have any oscilloscope hooked in, really hard to find it. So you just have to listen, to hear it pop, you'll have to hear it consistently pop, and from doing this for a long time, you're going to have to understand the sound and exactly how fast it's going versus what you're looking for. We're looking for, you know, different frequencies inside the center disc and there is a lot. So you're going to have to distinguish one's the best one. And when it does, it'll start to pop that piezo off really good. All right, we're about to hit the point where the piezo is going to start popping. You're going to hear a, a distinct clicking sound that's starting to go off. We just went out of it again. You hear that piezo popping a little bit. The resonance point is when you get that bottom disc to stay at a, a um, higher speed, and the top disc goes down in speed. So right now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the Tesla coil. And as I do that, I'm looking for when I can move that toroidal and get this thing in resonance. You'll know, like I said earlier, it's got to slow down the disc by 0.5 of a volt. So, what does that mean? It means the speed just has to come down a little bit on that upper disc more than it does the lower disc. So, when we do that, you'll start to hear it consistently start popping more and start to shake a little more. We're we'll right there in that resonance point. Now you hear the pizza popping.
doing it consistently now. It means I found a resonance point. You can see the craft shaking a little bit, right? See if we can't adjust the ultrasound. Oh yeah, turned up my hearing aids. It's a lot easier to hear everything now. Yeah, we're getting a pronounced sound now. But it's killing all the power on my lower disc. Hold on. Now it's losing the state. It's losing it right now. Probably a few minutes before that. So I'm messing with the camera. So where does that leave us for the day? What did we learn today? Well, I know where the resonance point is. I know where I have to hit it. I know this Tesla coil is no good for this. The Slayer Exciter circuit does not have the correct stuff in it to do it right. If you're looking for a hum in a transformer, just understand this. You must put pressure on one of the actual fields there. So when you put it into a Tesla coil, it means you're not oscillating correctly. When you're not oscillating correctly, the number one coil starts to hum. Not necessarily from the number two coil even though that's where the pressure is coming from. It's the failure to oscillate that makes the humming sound. So, I'm going to go back to my ZVS circuit, because I can get that thing to hum all day. It can take the pressure. So, wh what am I trying to say here? There's not enough amps in this Tesla coil in order to get the number one coil to hum. That's it. That's all there is to it. You get to the point where you get the resonance, you figure that out, you get to the point where the piezo's popping, you get to the point where everything starts to work correctly, and then the toroidal will overrun everything and slow the bottom dish down because you can't hit that point where you get the hum. And that's where we are today. 
So, it just sucks. It really sucks. I mean, I, I cannot express to you how much the Slayer Exciter circuit is not the right circuit for this. Not at all. It will not function properly. I blew up four different transistors today trying to get it right. Because there's a point in there when it feeds back, when it feeds back, the transistor heats up. When the transistor, heat, transistor heats up, it blows up. That's complete failure. Tells you the circuit is garbage for this. Anyway, it is what it is. I, I should have used the other circuit, and I didn't, and it's going to cost me a day. And uh, it just sucks. Just to make sure that I did identify the resonance point, I went back and ran a third test and had everything going. And this is what it sounded like. It When it found it, it immediately hit and you heard everything pick up at once. So here you go. There we go, come on, pick up just a little bit more. So you heard it. Everything was hitting. Everything is hitting on every cylinder. And I go to push the button. And when I do, it fries the Tesla coil circuit. Right there. It couldn't handle all of that coming back into it to the back pressure. And it immediately put all the heat to the transistor and blew it. Uh, I got to go back to that ZBS. You get the perfect state. You get it right where you want to get it. And you push the button. And then you fry your Tesla coil. So, anyway, at least you guys got to hear it. You know what it sounds like. Now, I amplify the sound a bit so that you guys can hear it a little more in depth. It doesn't sound like that live when you're sitting in the room. It's much, much quieter. But I wanted you guys to be able to hear the exact points where it was. And it's easier to hear it when it's amplified a little bit. So, anyway... If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have a better day than I am. Thank you.